Hey everybody, it's me as always your host Gambit896 and I'm back with another video for you guys. Today I'll be reviewing Hawkeye Volume 2, Little Hits. The series is written by Matt Fraction and in the second volume we have Steve Lieber, Jesse Hamm, David Aja and Francesco Fagavillo on the artwork. And on the colouring we have uh, Matt Hollingsworth and the series is published by Marvel Comics and the second volume collects issues 6 through 11 of the Hawkeye series. Uh, on issue number numbers 6, 8, 9 and 11, we have David Arthur on the artwork. On issue 7, we have Steve Lieber and Jesse Hamm. And on issue 10, uh, doing his own artwork and his own inking and colouring as well, we have Francesco Francavilla. So the story starts out and we have the Hurricane Sandy issue. With, From what I understand, when this issue was being published um, in single issue form, um, some of the proceeds were going to go to help the victims of uh, Hurricane Sandy. So in this issue we have Clint Barton, aka Hawkeye, basically trying to help out uh, Grills, who's one of his neighbours in his apartment building. Um, basically try to salvage what he can during the storm and basically try to wait it out. And we have uh, Grills basically going to uh, pick up his father and again pick up some... Um, various bits and pieces that he wants to uh, wants to save from the storm and uh, basically um, like I said waited out until the storm has, uh, has passed unfortunately it doesn't go according to plan and we find out that uh, Grills has a uh, pretty estranged relationship with his father and there's some really endearing moments whether it's Grills trying to save some um, family heirlooms but unfortunately due to uh, rising water levels and uh, Clint having to intervene and save him. Um, unfortunately, the heirlooms are lost um, in the ensuing flood. And there's also some really endearing character moments as well between Grills and his father, as you can see there. And we also find out that Grills' real name is actually Gil or Gilbert, um, and everyone just calls him Grills as kind of a nickname. There's also some really great uh, witty banter that takes place between uh, Clint and Kate Bishop, aka the female Hawkeye, when she is um, about to go to attend a wedding and to be a bridesmaid. And there's some really great um, arguments over pop culture uh, between uh, Clint and, uh, and Kate, particularly when it comes to music. And there's also some really great generally laugh out loud humour moments uh, with Kate when we follow her in her segment on the... Uh, the Hurricane Sandy issue, as she tries to also do a bit to uh, help out the uh, the victims of Hurricane Sandy. There's also some more really great, generally laugh out loud humor dialogue that takes place between Clint, uh, Wolverine, and Spider-Man, particularly over a um, uh, a TV show called Dog Cops, which unfortunately for Hawkeye he hasn't had the chance to catch up on. So when they start talking about the show, he plugs his ears and says. Spoilers, spoilers, shut up, shut up. Which I thought was kind of funny. Um, and we also have Clint trying to basically deal with now being the manager and the owner of his own apartment building. So we have everybody gathering on the roof um, in the lead up until Christmas um, for, uh, for for dinner, if you will. Unfortunately for Clint and his neighbours, the Traxio Draculas who we met in the first volume uh, of My Life as a Weapon which collected the first five issues. Uh, they show up again and start harassing um, Clint and everyone in the building. So we have Clint basically having to uh, step up to the plate and basically um, force these guys to go away and to leave him and his neighbours alone. As you can see there and there. Once again, David Aja doing an absolutely fantastic job on the artwork, uh, coupled immensely by the equally fantastic colouring uh, done by uh, Matt Hollingsworth. We also have the reappearance of Penny, who was kind of a love interest for Clint um, at this moment in the storyline. Uh, she returns to Clint to ask for his help to pull a caper on the uh, tracksuit Draculas in order to make life a bit more difficult for them. We also have Clint having to deal with the all of the women troubles in his life. And we have some really cool guest appearances from uh, Natasha Romanoff, aka the Black Widow. Uh, Bobby, um, 
Bobby Morse, aka uh, Mockingbird, and uh, Jessica Drew, aka Spider Woman. Um, and Matt Fraction lists off the women as follows: uh, Black Widow as the uh, the work wife, uh, Bobby as the ex-wife, and Jessica Drew as the supposed um, current girlfriend or current love interest for uh, for Clint. And we also have um, some great action scenes and fights between Clint and the, tra the tracks of Dracula's uh, in the midst of him and uh, Penny trying to pull their uh, caper on the uh, on the bad guys. And we also have a bit more of a glimpse into uh, Penny as a character, particularly when it comes to her past and how she got mixed up with the tracksuit, the tracksuit Dracula's in the first place. We also have the fallout from the two-part story arc of the tape, which is issues four and five which was collected in the first volume and we have basically all of the major crime families in the Marvel Universe deciding to put out a hit on uh, on Clint because of the humiliation that they felt um, at Clint's hands during the uh, the two-part story of the tape in the uh, in the uh, the supervillain run country of uh, Madripoor so we have such characters such as Kingpin uh, the Owl, uh, Tombstone uh, Hammerhead, and also the leader of the tracksuit Dracula's um, present at this meeting where they decide to uh, put out a hit on uh, on Clint. Uh, like I said, we also have Clint trying to deal with the uh, the women troubles in his life, whether it's uh, Bobby showing up with uh, divorce papers on Valentine's Day, or whether it's uh, Jessica Drew uh, finding out what Clint has been up to recently and her reaction to that and a pretty heated discussion uh, which takes place between the two as you can see there and with uh, do, 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 issue 10 we have the backstory of the character uh, known only as the clown at this point uh, we find out who this character is and what life was like for him growing up and unfortunately and unbeknownst to uh, Kate Bishop, aka the female Hawkeye, uh, she meets the character of the clown at um, one of her father's parties. Once again, Francesco Fancavilla doing a fantastic job on the artwork, as well as the colouring and the inking, and also showing off his artistic skills in terms of the really cool and innovative uh, panel layouts and storytelling method that, methods that he uses, um, along with Matt Fraction's fantastic writing. Just Francesco Francavilla's artwork is absolutely fantastic. And for those of you who may be wondering, I do intend to pick up uh, Scott Snyder, Jock, and Francesco Francavilla's uh, The Black Mirror uh, in trade, which is the Detective Comics run uh, that those three guys did from the pre-New 52. So I will pick that up at some point, I promise you all, and I will actually read it and review it. I just haven't got around to picking it up as of yet, um, because money's been a bit tight recently. So like I said, absolutely fantastic artwork and panel layouts from Frank Avila. As you can see, once again, there and there. And then with issue number 11, we have what is frankly, if, to put this into perspective, if issue 5 of Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder's Batman is the best single issue in terms of taking everything you think you know about comic book storytelling as a medium as well as the artwork and turning it on its head for those of you who read issue 5 of Batman you'll know that he was trapped in the labyrinth during the Court of Owls storyline and just the fantastic um, innovative decisions on the part of uh, Snyder and Capullo to basically put the readers through the same states of confusion and disorientation as Batman and when you read the issue you actually had to literally turn the pay turn the book or the trade sideways upside down um, left to right up down all over the place to uh, to read the issue and really conveyed like I said the um, the confusion and the disorientation that Batman was feeling and this issue focuses uh, issue 11 of Hawkeye focuses entirely on uh, Lucky Pizza Dog in the issue called Pizza Is My Business and this tells the the story from the perspective of Lucky um, of a dog as you can see 
that and there. Furthermore, this issue not only shows off how fantastic of an artist David Arger is, but also just how innovative and how fantastic of a storyteller he is through his artwork. Um, whether it's Lucky um, and his little female companion discovering the body of one of Hawkeye's neighbours on the roof, as you can see there, or seeing the events that transpired on the roof from the perspective of, uh, of Lucky, as you can see there, or whether it's um, uh, the scene where Clint and uh, Kate Bishop are basically in funeral attire and they are about to go to the funeral of uh, Clint's neighbour and you have Clint basically telling Lucky to keep an eye on the place and as you can see from the smaller panels you have Lucky raising one of his paws and giving sort of a, a wink, if you will, to Hawkeye, as though he understands the command. And then you have Lucky sat outside the apartment building, uh, being ever vigilant and keeping an eye on the place until both uh, Clint and uh, Kate Bishop return. And once again, you see all of these really intricate smaller panels of just the sights, the sounds and the smells that uh, Lucky is picking up whilst sat outside the... Uh, the apartment building. Like I said, this single issue is absolutely fantastic, and if it isn't already, it should be on, or it should be up for a single issue of the year award, because it's just absolutely fantastic. Everything from the smallest detail, whether it's um, Lucky's female companion walking away from him, and as you can see again from the smaller panels, uh, you see a heart breaking and then mending um, when she turns back around and sort of invites, her to fo invites him to follow her, so to speak. So it's just those little kind of little intricate details that really make this issue stand out. As well as just a fantastic um, single issue story on its own with, like I said, fantastic artwork by David Aja, um, as well as fantastic writing and storytelling from Fraction and the colouring done by Matt Hollingsworth. Overall, if I had to give Hawkeye Volume 2 Little Hits a rating, I'd give it an absolute 5 out of 5. I really, really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. The writing by Matt Fraction is equally on par with the writing and the storytelling that he did, that he did in the first volume. David Arger's artwork is equally on par with Matt Fraction's writing, in my opinion, along with the artwork from Steve Lieber and Jesse Hamm and uh, Francesco Francavilla and as I said Matt Hollingsworth doing an equally fantastic job uh, on the colouring as well as I said 5 out of 5 for Hawkeye Volume 2 Little Hits I really really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it and this series for me is up there with some of the best books that Marvel are publishing right now whether that be uh, X-Men Legacy, All New X-Men, Thor God of Thunder, Uncanny Avengers and like I said Hawkeye. So if you haven't read Hawkeye, I highly recommend you pick up the first two volumes and then pick up the uh, pick up issue um, issue 12 and the annual which came out um, last week or the week before and jump on board this series as it's absolutely fantastic. Highly recommended. And that about concludes this review video guys. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Didn't like it, thumbs it down. But as I always say, if it's thumbs down the video, please feel free to tell me why in the comment section below or send me a private message telling me why you didn't like the video. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos and you're new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. And until next time, this is Scambit896 signing off, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, guys.